Let's consider the special case of a two-body collision in one dimension. Now, collisions are generally considered isolated systems. And by this, we mean that the external forces either aren't there or so small they can be ignored. Now, this only has to be true during the short time of immediately before to immediately after the collision. So we're not talking about seconds before and seconds after, but just during the time of the collision. Now, there are plenty of internal forces, and of course, these are very important for determining the effects on the individual objects. But at the same time, they're unknown forces. We don't know exactly how long the collision takes or exactly what the force profile is during that collision, but we don't have to know. Because the system is isolated, that means momentum is conserved. And that means the momentum before the collision, the initial momentum, and the momentum after the collision, which we call our final momentum, have to be equal to each other. And each of these are total momentums. So since we have a two-body system, that initial momentum is the initial momentum of object one plus the initial momentum of object two. And our final momentum is, again, object one and object two added together. Now, if I take this equation and I expand it out, I realize that each one of these momentums includes a mass and a velocity. Since I've got two bodies, I have two different masses, m1 and m2. And each object has an initial velocity and a final velocity. But this whole equation, everything on the left-hand side, has to balance with everything on the right-hand side. So that means, in general, we've got six variables. For mass 1, we've got its mass and its initial and final velocities. For mass 2, we've got the same thing, its mass and its initial and final velocities. If you have any five of these six, then we can use our equation to find the one unknown. We might have to do a little algebra in there, but we can find it. So let's look at an example real quick. Let's say I've got mass 1 hits mass 2. And I'm going to set mass 1 to be 2 kilograms and mass 2 to be 3 kilograms. And they're moving such that mass 1 has a velocity of 4 meters per second and mass 2 has a velocity of 1 meter per second. After the collision, we know that mass 1 has a final velocity of 2 meters per second. And we want to know what the final velocity of mass 2 is. So we have five of our unknowns, and we're solving for our last one to give us our unknown sample. Well, if I take my general equation for a two-body collision in one dimension, then I can plug in all the variables I know, leaving V2F as a variable. So let's start with that equation and start simplifying it. First thing I can do is each time I've got a mass and a velocity, I can do that multiplication. So my 2 times 4 becomes 8, my 3 times 1 becomes a 3, my 2 times 2 becomes a 4 keeping track of my units in here to realize that these are momentum units now, kilogram meters per second. On our last term, we still just have 3 kilograms and the unknown velocity 2 final. Well, now because I've got two different momentums over here, I can add those up to give me 11. And over here on this side, whatever this is, it's got to balance out so this side is equal to 11 as well. So I can start trying to find out what that is first by moving my 4 and subtracting it over to the other side. Giving me 7 is my 3 kilograms times my unknown V2. If this whole quantity here is equal to 7, then my two sides of my equations will balance out. So then the last step to solve for V2 final is I'm going to have my 7 divided by 3, or that gives me 2.33 meters per second. Now let's go back and look at this in total now. I've got all six of my values. So before my collision, I've got a mass 1 that's a little bit smaller than my mass 2, but it's moving much faster. And so that means eventually it's going to catch up with mass 2 and collide. 
Now exactly what happens during the collision, again, we don't have to know the details of that. But after the collision, we still have our two masses, but now this mass 1 has slowed down, and this mass 2 has been sped up. So when they collided, it slowed down the first mass as it ran into it, and gave a little extra kick to my second mass, such that this one's now moving away from that one. So that's our basic collision in two dimension. We still have to look at a few other special cases.